Listen, man, if you're righteous, this is saying you're not going to fail. If you're righteous, it says here, you'll fall seven of the times, but you're going to get up if you're righteous. But if you're out there lurking and creeping and thiefing and trying to do things the wrong way, trying to take shortcuts without earning it, without paying the price, without understanding that there's toughness involved and pressure being involved with getting wealthy and being happy and prosperous. So therefore you have basis of what it means to feel broke, basis for what it means to feel lonely, basis of what it means to be alone versus an abundance of relationships and friends and family, and abundant conversations. That's basis. But I love how it says here that the righteous fall seven times. So even if you're righteous, even right now that you have tough times, you're gonna fall, but if you're righteous, God's gonna pick you back up. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, I'm gonna be reacting to Proverbs chapter 24 in our Wealth and Wisdom series. We've been breaking down a proverb every week, and we're gonna go all the way to 31 weeks of 31 chapters of Proverbs. Now, if you want to find a book that talks about sex, rich, wealth, scandal, murder for love, look no further than the Bible. Because King Solomon's parents they're kind of like in the mix of things. Uh, King Solomon's parents was King David of David and Goliath. So if you know any of the Bible stories where this young boy David uh, takes a slingshot and kills uh, Goliath uh, and basically wins a war for people of Israel. And so his reign to become king, fast forward, King David ends up marrying Bathsheba. They have a kid together. And that kid is named King Solomon, who's consider the wisest and richest king who ever lived. And to further validate that, it says that in scripture in Second Chronicles about who King David is. Because there's the arguments online who the richest king ever, but I'm following the Bible here, said here in the Bible and here in Second Chronicles. Let's read this together. God said to Solomon, because your greatest desire is to help your people, you didn't ask for riches and wealth, fame, or even the death of your enemies or a long life, but rather you asked for wisdom and knowledge to properly govern my people. I will certainly give you the wisdom and knowledge you requested, but I will also give you wealth, riches, and fame, so as no other king has had before you or will ever have in the future. So this is the basis of where we declare, for those who are faith-based and follow the Bible, why there's no other king that's ever been more wealthier and wiser than King Solomon. But King Solomon wrote Proverbs. And when I was early in my walk and I was trying to find my faith, and I was thumbing through Psalms because, you know, people in church are singing Psalms because Psalms are a bunch of hymns and poems. And I started thumbing in the chapter after, which is Proverbs, and the chapter after that, which is Ecclesiastes. And then boom, everything that I've been looking for in terms of wealth, wisdom, prosperity, happiness, guidance in my life was right in this book. And I started saying, who is this guy, King Solomon? So if you know anything about King Solomon, he's talking about wealth and wisdom and riches and, and his hate for laziness, him loathing poverty and people feeling that they're broke and they can't do anything. And he wrote it all in Proverbs, which would I consider the original mean tweets because he says, hey man, you can do this or you can do that. You can be rich or you can be poor. You can be diligent or you can be lazy. You can wake up early or you can sleep in. Whatever you want to do, do it because this is the result you're going to get. And you're not going to like it if you follow this path, but you're going to really love it if you follow this path. What do you want to do? So let's go and read Proverbs chapter 24 together. We'll go along and I'm highlight some of the verses here of these sayings because right now we're in the middle of sayings of the wise. So King Solomon is right written these Proverbs. Now here, here in the middle of his sayings of the wise, because it goes back to Proverbs chapter 22. And right now in Proverbs chapter 24, these are continued sayings of the wise. So let's check this out. Proverbs chapter 24, verse one. Do not envy the wicked. Do not desire their company for the hearts plot violence and the lips talk about making trouble. Verse three, by wisdom, a house is built. And through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. So if you're going to build a house, and you're going to have to build it with wisdom, not just winging it. So if you're building a career, you're building a business, you're building a financial house, your career house, your business house, your house house, it's got to be built with wisdom. And think about yourself as a builder. Before you build property, before you invest money, resources, contractors, construction workers, permits, don't you want to sketch things out? Don't you want to have a plan? Don't you want to have an architect make sure things are engineered properly and things are in proportion to where you want to see it? You want to see uh, your sun rising in the east, setting in the west. You want your pool in the back. You want your Wi-Fi like this. You want your cigar room here. You want your man cave here. You want your 
movie theater room here, your family room here, you're pulling the back. Don't you want things laid out properly? So therefore, you're just not kind of piecing things together and winging it together. Well, that's what King Solomon is talking about. You want to build your house with wisdom. So what is wisdom? I've always said that wisdom is knowledge times experience. So if you're young, but you got knowledge, but you don't have experience, well, there you go. You need to find somebody that can add both. Now, you've got experience. you got street smarts, but you have no academic smarts. You have no legal smarts. You have no school classroom smarts. You need to find somebody with these type of smarts because too much street knowledge without enough academic knowledge ends up to disaster. That's why very smart street people hire very good lawyers. Ever watch The Godfather? Anyway, let's move along. Let's go here to chapter five. The wise, again, another use of the word wise. The wise prevail through great power and those who have knowledge muster their strength. Surely you need guidance to wage war and victory is won through many advisors. If you want to wage war in your finances, you want to wage war in your debt, you want to wage war on making sure that your family never sees these type of financial times ever again, you want to wage war in inflation, well, guess what? You need the advice of counselors. Who's in your ear guiding you along? And I hope it's not the blind leading the blind. If you and your boy are like hanging out together, you and your girl are hanging out together and both of you are broke, none of you have accomplished much anything, how are you supposed to be leading the way if none of you knows the path? None of you are leading with wisdom. So in other words, you have a lot of street smarts, but you don't have a lot of academic smarts. That's not operating in wisdom. That's operating in smarts, but not operating in wisdom. Let's move along. Verse seven, wisdom is too high for fools. In the assembly at the gate, they must not open their mouths. So in other words, fools don't look for wisdom. They're, they're assembling, they're trying to get in, they're trying to get in, but they're not gonna get in because those that wanna get somewhere, look for those who are wise. Verse eight, whoever plots evil will be known as a schemer. The schemes of folly are sin and people detest a mocker. Now, verse 10, if you falter in a time of trouble, how small is your strength? Rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering toward slaughter. If you say, but we knew nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will he not repay anyone according to what they have done? So what King Solomon is saying here is stand up for justice. Help fight for those who don't know how to fight for themselves. If you're helping yourself, well, guess what? Now you got to help other people. Let's go on to verse 13. Eat honey, my son, for it is good. Honey from the comb is sweet to your taste. Know also that wisdom is like honey for you. If you find it, there is future hope for you and your hope will not be cut off. By the way, I'm just thinking about every time I hear the word honey, I think about the summer times, the times that we were broke, man. All we could eat sometimes was just bread and honey. How many of you guys had that back in the day? But if you love the sweetness of honey, then you definitely love the sweetness of what wisdom will do in your life. Verse 15, do not lurk like a thief near the house of the righteous. Do not plunder their dwelling place. For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Listen, man, if you're righteous, this is saying you're not going to fail. If you're righteous, it says here, you'll fall seven times, but you're going to get up if you're righteous. But if you're out there lurking and creeping and thieving and trying to do things the wrong way, trying to take shortcuts without earning it, without paying the price, without understanding that there's toughness involved and pressure being involved with getting wealthy and being happy and prosperous. So therefore you have basis of what it means to feel broke, basis for what it means to feel lonely, basis of what it means to be alone versus an abundance of relationships and friends and family, and abundant conversations. That's basis. But I love how it says here that the righteous fall seven times. So even if you're righteous, even right now that you have tough times, you're gonna fall, but if you're righteous, God's gonna pick you back up. Verse 17, do not gloat when your enemy falls. When they stumble, do not let your heart rejoice or the Lord will see and disapprove them, turn his wrath away from them. So therefore, listen, man, for those of you who are struggling and you make it, don't go back to all the people that said, ah, I proved it to you. I proved it to you. I made it. Listen, when you win, you're humble in your victory. And then you go back to extend a hand to the people that said you're not going to do anything with your life. How hard is that, by the way? How hard is that to have you do that? So say, you know what? I'm going to swallow my pride. Everybody that I proved wrong about me, I'm going to go back to them and say, hey, bro, I know you didn't believe me in the beginning, but listen, do you need any of my help? How hard is that for them to take? And then for them to say, uh, yeah, we, we always knew you're going to make it anyway. We always knew you're going to make it anyway. Interesting to see that conversation happen when it happens in your life. Let's go to the next verse. 19, do not fret because of evildoers or be envious of the wicked. For the evildoer has no future hope and the lamp of the wicked will be snuffed out. You know, it's, it's hard here to celebrate those in crime, 
those that are doing it wrong, those that are cheating, stealing. And by the way, it doesn't have to be people in the street. It could be in white collar crime. It could be people that uh, you never think. It could be pastors. It could be politicians. It could be corporate America. It could be your brother. It could be anybody. You know, don't fret. Don't be upset for those that do evil because, man, they have what they have coming to them. Let's go to the next verse. 21, fear the Lord and the king, my son, and do not join with rebellious officials, for those too will send sudden destruction on them, and who knows what calamities they can bring. What King Solomon here is talking about, alignment. Who are you aligned to? Is it just aligned to you, man? Is it allowed to you, carnal? Or are you aligned to a higher power greater than you? That's why when you're looking about becoming a faith-based millionaire, you're looking about following your faith to a higher level. It's just not the money that you make, but the process of who you're aligning with. So therefore, when things do come crashing down, as it says here in a previous uh, previous scripture, that you can get back up if you are aligned with the right people headed in the right direction. Let's go on to the next verse. To show partiality in judging is not good. Whoever says to the guilty, you are innocent, will be cursed by peoples and denounced by nations. But it will go well with those who convict the guilty and rich blessing will come unto them. In other words, you got to make a tough decision. If it means that if somebody made a crime, they got to pay for it. As much as you might like them, it's going to cause a lot of people to say, why, why did you give favor to this person? So in other words, it's easy for people to know you, they do wrong, but they know you, so they get off. Let's go to the next verse. An honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. 27, put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, Build your house. So in other words, there's preparation in you building wealth. There's preparation in you starting a business. There's preparation in you starting a family. Don't put the cart in front of the horse. Sometimes people make relationship decisions, life decisions, thinking that it's right. But according to scripture here, it says, put your work in order. There's an order of things. God is a God of order. And King Solomon is following these steps, this order. Many people are like myself, Boom, you put us in an area, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, I want to do that. That's me, that's my fault. That's where the area I fall in. But thank goodness I found people, staff, more importantly, a wife that is more organized, so therefore I can put things in my life in order. Let's go to the next verse. 28, do not testify against your neighbor without cause. Would you use your lips to mislead? Do not say, I'll do it to them as they've done unto me. I'll pay them back for what they did. So in other words, if they did you wrong, and now it's time for you to get them back, but the situation that you're being a witness in, or that, that you're asking, hey, did this happen or not? Did this person do it or not? But this is a way for you to get back at them? And you say, yeah, they did it, even though they didn't do it. This is where King Solomon says, you're wicked. You're not righteous. And it's come back and bite you in the butt. Let's go to the next verse. I went past the field of a sluggard, past a vineyard of someone who has no sense. Thorns had come up everywhere and the ground was covered with weeds and a stone wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. A sleep, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. So what King Solomon here is saying is be careful, man. If you're a lazy boy, if you're lazy, you're hanging out too long. If you're waking up too late in the day, you get nothing done. Next thing you know, weeds start crawling over. Your bills start piling up. Stone walls in ruins. Your relationships are in ruins. Your foundation is starting to crumble because you're not out there shaking hands and building a relationship with people or extending your network or building your network. Your business starts to implode because you're not out there expanding the marketing message of what you stand for, the vision of your company to your employees because you're lazy and you wonder why you're not going anywhere. And so these are some of the things that King Solomon said here in Proverbs chapter 24. So I want to know what you think. What's your thoughts, your comments? You agree with me? You don't agree with me. But uh, one thing for sure, I love King Solomon. Next week, we'll be talking about chapter 25, some more sayings of the wise from King Solomon. And uh, if you're looking for a book, and you're looking for ways to lead your life in a much better path, consider reading the Bible. It's free. It's online. Consider reading the Bible. Consider reading Proverbs, consider reading Ecclesiastes. Next week, we'll go, go unpack another chapter during this Wealth and Wisdom series. So if you haven't done this already, here's chapters 22 and 23 beforehand. So therefore, you can check it out too as well. And uh, if you'd like for us to react to any other Bible stories or anything like that, please put it in the comment section below. But next week for this Wealth and Wisdom series on Sunday nights, we'll be doing chapter 25 next week. Appreciate you guys tuning in. 
And if you receive value from this video, consider hitting like. And if you found that this YouTube channel might possibly be a solution to some of the biggest answers you have about your walk and your pursuit of wealth, wisdom, and happiness, please consider hitting subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.